TV ratings in the world of wrestling just aren't what they used to be. On one hand, there's nothing wrong with that. As fans, we don't need to worry about it if we don't want to. But it's true that back in the day, there was a lot of fun in seeing who was going to come out on top and what exactly drew fans to change the TV channel. Because wrestling is bonkers as well, some of the skits and matches that have attracted eyeballs are truly mind-blowing, especially when we look at them today. Who on earth wanted to watch that, you will cry? The answer probably being me. I was an idiot, and I still am. If something weird was going on, I probably felt compelled to tune in. Whoops, I'm Simon from What Culture, and this is 10 Weird Wrestling Matches That Drew Incredible TV Ratings. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10, Wrath vs. Lismark Jr. on Nitro. Happening on the 21st of December 1998, this all-time classic drew a rating of 4.2. The only question is, how? A mere six days before WCW presented that year's StarCast, this episode of Nitro drew an overall 3.99 rating compared to Raw's 4.71. That comprehensive victory for Vincent Mann only makes it even more confusing that Wrath squashing a Mars Cruiserweight was something that people wanted to see. For context, more fans tuned into this victory over a DX segment starring Shane McMahon. Go figure. Whilst there was a little bleeding over of the audience from a Ric Flair promo that preceded it, a fact is a fact. Wrath outdrew DX and a member of the McMahon clan and did so by a 0.2 score. I think this just proves that World Championship Wrestling should have made Wrath their world champion, especially as the ones Adam Bomb used to have a cool finishing move. And let's face it, WCW did a lot worse. Number 9, Low Down vs. The Dudley Boys on Raw. If you ever needed a stat to prove that on the 22nd of January 2001, WWE was really popular, this match pulled a 5.70 rating. This gets even more difficult to process when you remember how bad it was. For some reason, WWE had decided to put D'Lo Brown and Headbanger Mosh with Tiger Ali Singh and dress them all up in traditional Indian attire. In this instance, I think all of them would have been better off being told creative had nothing for them. Brown and Mosh, who was now called Chaz, didn't benefit from this at all and were even replaced in the 2001 Royal Rumble by comedian Drew Carey. Talk about having your place in the company underlined with a punch to the face. It did mean, though, that on this night they were given a tag team title shot against the Dudley Boys and somehow that outdid Stone Cold Steve Austin. I am not joking. The main event of Kurt Angle and Trish Stratus versus Stephanie Mann and Triple H scored a 5.66 even with the Austin run at the end which everyone knew was coming. Does that always happen? We must have all been nuts in 2001. It's the only answer. Number 8, The Undertaker versus Barry Windham on Raw. Surely not, I hear you shout, but yes, on the 27th of April 1998, the dead man took on Barry Windham, who I think we all forgot was in the WWE in 1998, and did a 6.06 .06 rating. You could say this did so well because it came in the midst of the Kane Undertaker storyline, and make no mistake, there was a lot of interest about that in the late 90s. When Taker called out his brother post-match, it was far more interesting than seeing Windham being squashed. The thing is, however, it does seem like there was some intrigue to this clash as it went live at the top of the hour, an individual style to tune in. To give you an idea of how well it did, the evening's headline WWE title match between Steve Austin and Goldust drew a 6.0. As we've already established, this was just a bonkers period all round. Number 7, Jeff Jarrett vs X-Pac on Raw. If anyone tries to pretend that wrestling is more popular nowadays, just tell them that on the 28th of June 1999, Jeff Jarrett vs X-Pac scored a 7.34 rating. So much for that x buck heat. And it's true that the Intercontinental title was on the line, but come on now. And yeah, admittedly, this episode of the show peaked at 9.5 for The Undertaker vs. Steve Austin, which remains the record, but still, no one could have seen this coming. What likely happened was that fans switched over from Nitro in anticipation of the title match and an Austin win, especially because WCW were presenting Sid Vicious vs. Scott Putzky at the same time. Their main event was also David Flair vs. Kevin Nash, and if that was my choice, then yeah, I'd watch Jarrett and X-Pac too. Everybody benefited from smart booking here, even if Dave Meltzer in The Observer would credit Deborah's ringside appearance as the actual reason it did so well. But who knows? Number 6, Goldust vs. The Godfather on Raw. A 6.72 rating on the 5th of April 1999 was the reward for a match between two of the more bizarre wrestlers in WWE history. This thought is made stranger still when you remember this was one week removed from WrestleMania 15 and there, the blue meanie had called Dustin Runnels mummy. At the same time, The Godfather was trying to buy off opponents by offering up some prostitutes. Yep. Good luck explaining that to new fans of wrestling. There wasn't much to the fight aside from Godfather threatening to kick Goldust's head in because he was sniffing the legs of his hoe train, and just because none of this was crazy enough, JR and Jerry Lawler also spent the bulk of the segment discussing The Undertaker's plans to crucify 
Stephanie McMahon. Aided by that story going on in the background and the fact that The Godfather had developed into one of the WWE's most over characters, and this absolutely smashed it. Number 5. Perry Saturn and Lodi vs High Voltage on Nitro Going back to the 31st of August 1998, this tag team match at a 6.77 rating, even though by this point WCW had gone off the rails, or at least started to threaten they would head in such a direction. Thankfully, Saturn and Lodi vs High Voltage wasn't that, but it was as throwaway as they come, and yet somehow still did a massive number. World Championship Wrestling really did shoot themselves in the foot. It was short, came after a bunch of other meaningless bouts, and yet the rabid audience was still happy to watch it. According to The Observer, this insignificant tag match became the second most watched pro wrestling bout ever on cable television at the time, and was viewed in a staggering 5 million plus homes in the US alone. Imagine we gave promotions this much goodwill now. Be like a completely different business. Number 4. Deborah vs Nicole Bass on Raw Ever wondered what WWE was like before the women's revolution? Go to the WWE Network and search for the 7th of June 1999 Raw, where Debra vs Nicole Bass sent the ratings heading towards a 7.13. To break this down further, fans just really liked, well, the female physique during this period. It would be ridiculous to call this a wrestling match because it was instead a bikini contest for the women's title. To put this in perspective, the reveal of Vince McMahon as the higher power on the same episode posted a 7.03. Raw's main event, The Undertaker vs Big Show, did a 6.86, and WCW's big attempt to fire back with a Sting vs Randy Savage headliner scored a low 2.48. That means Deborah was responsible for almost a five-point jump over two of the most iconic stars in the business, and she managed to garner and more channel switches than The Undertaker. All this because horny teenagers wanted to see some breasts. What on earth? Number 3. Meat vs Test on Raw The battle of two dudes with pointless four-letter names, Meat vs Test still scored a 6.2 on the 17th of May 1999. Why? Things were really bad for WCW halfway through 1999 as Nitro's big rundown of the Slamboree pay-per-view that had just happened drew a measly 2.4 quarter hour rating, and that became even more depressing for WCW fans when they realized recaps of matches like Kevin Nash vs DDP and Sting vs Goldberg weren't as popular as Meat vs versus Test. Somehow, though, these two outscored WCW by over full four points, presumably because people were intrigued to see what might happen with Terry Runnels jacking in and Ryan Shamrock at ringside. The Undertaker's casket match with The Rock might have helped it, but it took place in a different quarter. So in short, we've no clue as to why so many people wanted to see this, maybe just to help with this list. Number 2. The Rock vs The Brooklyn Brawler on Raw Why was The Rock a major draw? Because on the 28th of February 2000, just getting in the ring against The Brooklyn Brawler saw the TV rating hit a 6.33. Even though during this year The Rock would clash with Triple H, Chris Benoit and The Big Show, it was The Brooklyn Brawler in Madison Square Garden that got everyone tuning in with glee. I don't know either, aside from the fact it showed we had a new number one babyface in town following Stone Cold Steve Austin and his name was Dwayne Johnson. Over on Nitro, Lex Luger vs Buff Bagwell posted a 2.15 quarter in the same spot, meaning the glorified jobber had beaten all of their asses too. This was what was happening to WCW stars at the time, or in short, how dedicated and involved the WWE audience was. Nothing would deter them, even if it was just the great one whipping random behind. Number 1. The Stooges vs The Mean Street Posse on Raw Put Pat Patterson, Gerald Briscoe and The Mean Street Posse in a blender, and it'll spit out an 8.61 rating. This is a fact, and it happened on the 10th of May 1999. Not only one of Raw's highest rated segments ever, clocked in at number 3, these chalk and cheese teams piqued everyone's interest as fans switch over to see what was going to happen. If they wanted silliness, they wouldn't have been disappointed, because it was really silly. The question is who the real appeal here was. As awesome as Shane's boys were, they were never huge draws, and Patterson and Briscoe were the stooges by this period, weren't exactly tearing it up, so I guess individuals were just fascinated to see what this would be, and they grabbed the remote before changing the channel. I'll tell you this though, it was entertaining, maybe for the wrong reasons.